So this is the Art Life blog, day 158. Uh, I'm Ace Troy. Jacob Wolf. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and thank you for having me here. Yeah. Um, you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm born and raised Portland native. Um, I've been doing stencil art since I was 16, so over the past 11 years. Uh, started off uh, as a street artist. Super interested in like Shepard Fairey and Banksy when I was uh, 16. That was my two big like points of inspiration. Um, then I kind of gave it up for a few years and moved to California for a while. And then I came back and eventually got super into art because I was sick of working for people. <laughs> I feel you there, man. Yeah. So uh, your inspirations, Banksy, Shepard Fairey, was that like your introduction into art or just like street art? No, just like into street art. Um, I, I think that was like when street art was really starting to like make a comeback as something that people were paying attention to. And you know, I was like rebellious teenager, like what can I do that's like kind of illegal and different. And street art and spray paint was kind of the most seductive mistress out there, I guess. <laughs> What's your dog's name? Fox. 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 You just wanted to say. Oh, he'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> um, were you making art before you got into stencils? Yeah. Um, yeah, I used to do just a lot of like drawing stuff or like weird. I did a lot of weird stuff when I was a kid. Like, uh, I was doing this thing for a while where uh, we had one of those octopus lamps. Like the 70s ones, there's like a bunch of them, they've got the light bulb underneath. And I used to melt crayons on them and then make pictures. Uh, but my parents caught on to what I was doing and they were not <laughs> not happy <laughs> with me. <laughs> um, drawing, just like anything really, I did ceramics. Um, I used to be really into music. I had like a music project for a while that was really terrible. Uh, <laughs> back in the MySpace days, um, that I gave up on when I was done being a scene boy, so, uh, yeah, and then I got back into stenciling after that. When you got into stencils, uh, what were some of, the, like, the first pieces that you were interested in making? Um, I used to do portraits of my friends a lot, or, uh, girls I was dating, um, or... I think the Warhol banana was like one of the first things that I like stole and like used for street art. Um, that was fun. I used to go out with uh, my girlfriend at the time when I was 16 and we both did stencil art together. Right on. Yeah. And so when you're spraying stencils on when you go out, like, you have a, a stencil, you go out and spray it, and, and then, like, what? You have a, a wet stencil? Uh, well, I mean, I don't, I don't do street spraying anymore, but what I, when I used to do it, um, the way that we would do it is I would cut stencils out of uh, thicker cardboard, like, like cardboard boxes, um, like cereal boxes, not like corrugated cardboard. And then I would take out, like, a notebook or a drawing pad, and after you did a spray, you'd take it... You take the stencil and put it between a couple pieces of paper, go like that, and then like do that two or three more times, and it would get most of the wet paint off. Some of the pages might stick together, but your stencil would stay dry, and you could just kind of go off. Right on. Um, when did you make the decision to go from like street art to more like fine art gallery? Uh, well, I started. The first time I did last Thursday, I think I was like 18 or 19, and uh, I actually was approached by the owner of the Tin Shed, and she wanted me to do a show. Um, but I was like terrified of that at the time. I didn't take her up on that until I was probably like 21-ish. I don't, I don't even remember how I got my first show. Um, but I, I had a friend uh, named Katie who was helping me. Uh, she called herself my manager, and she would kind of just like push me in the right direction and she kind of showed me how to uh, lay all the organizational bricks necessary to set myself up to do this full time which was cool because I was definitely a disorganized drunk 21 year old boy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
how has your art transformed over the years? How has it changed? Um, I'd say the subject matter and also like the way that I cut or style stencils has definitely changed a lot and my work's gotten more intricate and I've used I've used it in a lot of different ways over the years. Like uh just finding like new things to paint on is is a fun thing. Like every year I think I do a new piece. Like one year it was like making uh pieces out of like beer cans and like painting over those and making those into a canvas. And last year I did like painting on the bottom of like old pairs of shoes and like I've done like vintage irons. I've done all kinds of different stuff. Um so that's that's one thing. <laughs> what is some of the more uh, recent stuff that you've been working on? Um, the the f I think I've made like three. I've made three like totally from scratch, brand new, like my own pieces this year. I've been putting a lot more of myself into my work. I think as I'm trying to get away from. Uh, I'm kind of trying to get away from uh, pop art in like a certain sense. Like I, st I'm still definitely a pop artist. That's what I love. But I don't want like, I don't like doing uh, just like reproductions of like other images anymore. That's not really something that I want to do. It's still something that I'm definitely very willing to do. But for my own like personal stuff that I'm putting out there, um, this year I'm definitely focusing more on like having totally like original ideas and doing something that people haven't seen before. So how do you go about taking an original idea and turning it into a stencil? Do you start with like a photograph? Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll start with a photograph um, a lot of times and then I'll kind of just like mess, mess things around and add things together and then uh, stylizing it by hand is like a huge thing. One of my friends was telling me they had access to like a laser cutter and they were like, if you wanted to start having a laser cutter cut your stuff for you. And I was like, it's not gonna turn out right if I don't do it by hand. It's gonna look terrible. <laughs> um, so you use X-Acto knife, cut all your own stencils by hand? Yeah. That's rad. Um, do you ever do like collaborations with other artists? Uh, sometimes. Street artists or stencil artists? Uh, I did it a lot more when I was doing sticker art. Um, I would trade with other artists like around the country. Sticker heads are like really big into doing that kind of stuff. Mm. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, and there's a huge community on Instagram. Instagram's a great tool for street artists to speak with each other because it's a way to get a hold of someone else without having to really put your own personal information or your face out there if you don't want to. Um, I've definitely hooked up with a lot of other like local Portland street artists because uh, they know that I'm chill and not the cops, but they don't have to show me their face on Instagram. It's it's just a it's a cool channel to have, and I've I've gotten um, to see so many other artists work because of Instagram. So it's actually a, it's a great networking tool for artists. Where what are some shows that you've been a part of in the past that you you're excited about? Uh, there's been a lot of stuff, um, all of the stuff that I've gotten to do with, uh, Chris Haberman and Jason Brown over at the Good Foot and at People's Gallery and at the New Gallery, the Wonder Gallery has all been really exciting and they've, uh, anyone who's ever asked me to be in a theme show has in a way pushed me because like I love being asked to be in themed shows where I have to come up with new work that's maybe in like a vein of stuff that I never even think about like um uh i was just in this it was like it was called black friday it was a show at uh this small gallery called splendor porium that's in southeast um and i did a bunch of like occult dark stuff for that which people really responded to and i like that kind of stuff but it, it wasn't really something that i thought about like delving into until i did that show and then that kind of sent me down like another like path so it's fun to get Projects like that that like make me think in a different way than I normally would. Right on. Are there any galleries coming up that you're gonna be a part of that you want to talk about? Um. Well, I've got a show coming up at Blackbird Pizza that's gonna be up for two months. Um, 
that I'm pretty excited about that I'm going to show a lot of the brand new stuff that I've been working on this year. Um, I've got so I've got stuff coming like further down the line. Um, I met uh, at the Retro Gaming Expo last weekend. I met uh, the lady that runs the Living Dead Horror Con, and I'm like a really big horror freak. So, and we were talking about maybe having me be a part of that this coming October. So if that happens, I mean that'd be great. That's something I'm definitely looking forward to. Hell yeah. Man. <laughs> uh, where can people find you, you, your art, right now? Um, I'm working on building my full website, but uh, at acetroy.com, uh, there's a shop, and uh, you can get a hold of me that way. Uh, Instagram is also a great way to get a hold of me, or Facebook. Um, I'm kind of out and all over the place with that, and I'm going to be adding a lot of stuff soon. I'm working with uh, a friend of mine on um, making, we're going to start making furniture together, and then I've got another friend who uh, we're having t-shirts printed right now of some of the new stuff that I've been doing, so that's yeah. exciting. That's all really exciting. What do you mean making furniture? Uh, my friend, he's really good with uh, he, like doing woodworking and stuff, uh, but he he was like, you can paint, I can do this, I'll make the stuff, you paint the stuff. So I think it's mostly going to be like tables and maybe some shelving a little bit. We're, we're, we're in the process of getting our first project together right now. We're doing two like fairly small end tables, um, but we'll see how that works. Yep. Furniture is definitely something I've always wanted to mess around with. Uh... Are you in any galleries right now? Yeah, um, I'm at I'm at People's pretty much all the time. I'm a resident there and the Wonder Gallery. Those are both in Pioneer Place. Um, People's is generally where I see your work. Okay, yeah, yeah. They've always got me up in there, which is cool. Um, I have a pretty much forever going show at Nirvana Cafe, which is over across from. Dig a pony, but I heard a rumor that they were closing, so I need to speak to the owner about that a little bit. Um, I've got stuff up intermittently at Slingshot Lounge pretty much throughout the year. Like, if you go in there every like third or fourth month, you're likely to see my work up. Um, I'm pretty much up somewhere all the time, at least at least two or three places, uh, and I'm always like letting people on Facebook and Instagram know. Like where, where I am. Sometimes I have shows up I don't even know about. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice problem to have, I guess. But yeah. Where? Uh, that's not what I how I wanted to start that question. <laughs> what, what are some of your goals for the future? Like, where do you want to see yourself go? Uh, it's always nice to like be able to reach more people. Um. And I think it'd be cool to meet somebody that I work well with and do our own, like, big show together. I think that'd be really cool. Um, I'm just looking to get more shows outside of Portland. Um, I showed in Louisiana and a couple times in Vegas last year. And they are interested in having me come out and do, um, like, a feature show in Vegas sometime this year. Uh, so we're talking about that. But I would love to travel, and I love meeting people and seeing uh, different, like, social cultures in other cities. So I'm hoping that in the future, whatever it holds for me, there's travel is definitely in there. Definitely, man. Um, do you have any last comments, questions, concerns? <laughs> um, I don't think so. The, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is a, a gallery that I throw every once in a while. Uh, it's called the 4th Effin' Friday Gallery. And uh, I'm planning two right now. One will be at my home, which is generally where it is. And mm -hmm. it's just the, the artists that I've interviewed in the past couple months uh, get an invite to come show art. There's always live music and free booze and food and a ton of artists. And we paint on the walls and get kind of crazy we, cool. do, we do a little art raffle so any of the artists that are willing to donate something to this raffle uh get a big thank you from me and any of the guests that come in 
can donate five dollars or more to the video blog and to the fourth up and friday gallery and they get a raffle ticket so i think like the very last thing we do at the end of the night is give away a bunch of art nice. and like that's the the reason people come is to hang out meet artists and then like get to leave with something tangible for a really good price yeah and uh so there's one at my house coming up and then there will be a one year about one year anniversary party where all of the artists that i've interviewed in the past year and a half will get an invite uh i did have a venue it fell through so now i'm trying to pick up the pieces and find somewhere else to do this uh but details for both of these will be coming out soon cool. so expect an invite uh your uh, attendance would be appreciated, <laughs> never, never, never mandatory, but uh, it, it's always great to see uh, talented artists at it, shows and stuff. Cool, yeah man, definitely let me know about it. Right on. Uh, I, that's all I have, thank you for having me here. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you for tuning in everybody, Art Life Video Vlog Fox, right here, <laughs> and uh, y'all have a great day, see ya soon.